Welcome, welcome, patrons. It's the holiday season, so I wanted to do a topic that everyone is sure to love. Everyone's favorite companion, the dog. <laughs> oh, we really don't know too much about him, but let's go over what we do know, just for fun. Names. The dog companion is unique in that you actually get to name it, but if we want to get technical, there are a few quote unquote canon names for him. Sort of. You could really do whatever you want, though. In the fandom, the common name is just Dog, which is why I've been calling him as such. <laughs> but uh, it's easy to understand why, though, so the newbies don't get confused. I, I mean, Dog, we get it. But the most popular name is Barkspawn. From what I can tell, the name seems to have originated in the fandom and was adopted by the devs, becoming almost canon when Darkspawn Chronicles came out and it was discovered that Alistair had named him Barkspawn. The name would also come back in here as a Dragon Age as well. Another popular name is Rabbit. I can't find a lot of information on this, but from what I can tell, it seems the name Rabbit is from writer Mary Kirby, in which she stated as a joke that the dog's official name is Rabbit. And that's about it. Maybe because, like, the dog does bounce a lot in game. I, I, I don't know. I don't really have a clear story on why this is, as it supposedly originated on forums that no longer exist. So it's kind of hard to tell the history of this exactly. Dogs? So if we want to get really technical, there are actually two different dogs in Dragon Age Origins, even if they have the exact same function and they look the same and they act the same. But there are just like a few slight differences. So let's go over that. The two dogs is that there is a dog you have in the human noble origin, who I'm going to refer to as Rabbit in this video. And then there is the dog you save from the taint, which I'm going to call Barkspawn. These are not their official names, but for the sake of clarity, then they just seem to fit. I'm going to be using it. Rabbit. We actually have the least information on Rabbit. If you play a human noble, we know that he is a purebred Mabari and belongs to you specifically. After the Blight and during the events of Awakening, he is taken to be bred so that Denrim can repopulate the lost Mabaris during the final battle of the Blight. During the events of Witch Hunt, he can join back up with his master, and if you are not a human noble and did not recruit Barkspawn, Rabbit will be sent from Fergus, the human noble's older brother, to help you. What's interesting about Rabbit is that even though he can attack a lot of Darkspawn, he never gets the Blight and does not go through the debatable ritual where he is immune. So while there is an argument that Barkspawn is sort of like a warden, Rabbit is not. Barkspawn. We don't know who Barkspawn's original master was, but we know that he died from a Darkspawn attack in the Kokari Wilds, and he was taken to Ostagar to be treated. He fell sick with the taint, and your warden, regardless of origin, can put the dog out of his misery, or you can collect a flower in the swamps that will help him fight off the taint. As a quick aside, this doesn't make a lot of sense regarding the lore of the taint, sort of. So like, while the Ash Warrior in the camp does say that Mabaris can either die from the taint or be able to build up an immunity, and apparently this flower helps build up that immunity, it just kind of feels so off from what we know of the taint and how no one is safe from it. Now granted, in Dragon Age Inquisition, in the dark future of Redcliffe, there are some notes of those who study the Blight saying that some people seem to be immune to the effects of the Blight in testing, or at least in some sort of capacity. So I Yes, there is a small percentage of people and dogs that can sort of consume a bit and not immediately die. I, I, I don't really know. What, what I'm interested in is that how this flower helps. What about the flower can help these people recover and why are we not eating this stuff in buckets? Anyway, Barkspawn is then able to survive the Battle of Ostagar and track the Warden down, warning them of an oncoming Darkspawn attack and then they join the party. And then after the whole game, much like Rabbit, after the war is over, he helps her populate the Denerim Kennels and later joins back up with a warden in Witch Hunt. Dog. But Barkspawn and Rabbit aren't the only dogs in the series. The champion of Crookwall has one as well. Much like the origin companion's dog, which is actually just the default name, so I'm just gonna use that, is a male Mabari that the player can use. Except instead of being his own companion, he is a summon you use in battle. He is the family pet of the Hawk family was able to make it out of the Blight along with Hawk and the mother and this one sibling that survives. If you interact with Dog during the game, he will have several conversations with either your companions or friends. For example, Sandal seems to have a special relationship with him, Meryl tells him stories, and Aveline will even use him as a way to train the city guards. Where are they now? So before I go into speculations, I don't really know. So. There's that. It's all guesswork. But in the reality of the situation, Rabbit, Barkspawn, and Dog are all 
probably dead by the time of Inquisition, or at the very least, trespasser. Now, granted, David Gator on his Tumblr did state that Mabari lived for as long as the plot requires, so I guess there's a chance. But dogs like a Mabari in the real world only live for about 10, 12 years, which I should say I'm using the numbers for a Mastiff, which they look the most similar to a Mabari uh, when you dock their tail and ears, but that's a whole thing. Anyway, so for all three dogs, by the time Trespasser rolls around, they are all pretty much past their due, as they're all pretty much the same age. Now there is an argument that the breed is magically altered and can live a lot longer, but for the moment we don't have proof either way. But while our lovely pups may have crossed the Rainbow Bridge, we know that they have puppies still out there somewhere. Well, at least Rabbit and Barks Mondu, dog, I, we have nothing from dog. In the Dragon Age comic Deception, Olivia's Mabari Autumn is mentioned to be the pup of the hero of Ferelden's Mabari. Now this isn't true, but it apparently is a plausible lie. So apparently they had enough puppies where it's a, a rarity and something to be proud of, but not rare enough that people will automatically know that she's lying. And that, dear patrons, is all that we know of the puppies of Dragon Age. Do you still have lingering questions, proof that I'm wrong, comments about your own fan theory? Feel free to tweet me at Killerthon on Twitter or send a PM to user Gillanon on Reddit. Dara Sheral.